How hard can it be to write a kid's book? Uh, statistics will say that you're about to turn off and find another video to watch round about now, but don't stick with it. I chose the title of this video to be a little bit clickbaity. But just how hard is it to write a children's book? A kid's book. If you type that into YouTube, you will come up with, I wrote and illustrated and published my kid's book in seven days. And people are using AI to do all sorts of extraordinary things. Uh, it doesn't alter the fact their stories, they're a, a rubbish. So the actual content that they're starting off with is rubbish. And then they add AI created rubbish to it. Kindle lets you publish just like that. The market is just being swamped, absolutely swamped with complete rubbish, as is the whole of YouTube, as is the whole internet. And that is actually quite depressing. So I've been a children's author for 35 more years and have made my living at it. And it's got progressively harder to do that. I think that got me depressed around about 2008 and it's been a downhill way ever since. That's one of the reasons I came on YouTube and have been doing all this drawing video stuff. When I started doing drawing videos on YouTube, there were only a few other people doing similar things. And, and it felt like it felt like a mission that I really had to do this. Uh, but now I, I look up, you know, drawing videos on YouTube. And I think, wow, these people are amazing. It put me to shame. I think I have a, a particular way of breaking things down that others don't. But I feel I kind of m completed my mission really there. And now I'm at a point where I think, well, what the hell do I do with the rest of my life? Do I want to just keep churning out videos? I have another channel called Draw Stuff Real Easy, which YouTube turned into a made for kids channel. And they last sort of August or something asked me to come and do um, a course with them, which was fascinating. And it taught me lots of stuff about analytics and it took me into the analytics in a way they maybe didn't expect. <laughs> so, so the cohort that I was working with are very much sort of more entertainment based than I am. And you can see that when you applied YouTube learnings to their challenge, up went their views. It didn't work with me. And, and I found all sorts of interesting metrics um, inside <laughs> to show how YouTube was actually uh, ignoring more and more and more. It was ignoring educational content and more and more and more pushing uh, uh, entertainment stuff and 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 I don't blame them you know this is a TikTok world and it's short attention spans and YouTube are kind of pretty obsessed with uh, creators doing shorts I don't want to do shorts really it's not satisfying and I realize I'm, that channel is not a YouTube channel at all it's actually a Google channel people go to Google how do I draw this Psh up comes the video, they watch it and they go away. Sometimes they subscribe, but they're what I call drive-by subscribers. They're not uh, followers. If you've been following this channel for the last 15 years or so, you'll know it, it lost its way a long time ago. And I think I lost my way uh, around about 2014. So I've been putting a lot of thought into this. Around about Christmas time, I decided, right, this is what I'm going to do. This is going to be my new year and this is how it's all going to start off. I'm going to dedicate myself to doing children's drawing. <laughs> and I set up a Patreon, uh, you know, for the parents and teachers and things. And, and as soon as I set it live, I just panicked. I thought, I do not want to do this. <laughs> and I think probably this course I've been on, uh, you know, I just really convinced myself this is what I should do, ought to do. But what you think you ought to do isn't actually what you should do, is it? Really. You may remember uh, around about this time last year, I was all set to launch Generation Moon. And I was so excited about this. Um, it, it all started with just a thought one day. I, I can't remember what sparked it. It suddenly <laughs> it dawned, it dawned on me. Kids today in classrooms will one day live on the moon. They will live and work on the moon. That They are the Generation Moon. And that just sparked off this whole thing in my head. And so I started with this. It's the first book in the Generation Moon um, trilogy. I had this wonderful marketing campaign. I was, I was, I was explaining the marketing campaign. It's a kind of a teaching thing as well. And then my mum died and everything just went weird. And so this went on hold. Everything just went on hold. And I thought, what am I going to do? What do I... Just publish it. Just, just do it so it's out there. And I thought I will sort of pick up with the next book and sort of put some energy into that 
But I, I just lost all interest in the whole thing. This is how hard is it to be a children's author? Okay, <laughs> I lost all interest in it and and lost interest in lots of things. I had various responsibilities suddenly thrust on me, um, things to sort out, you know, families. Uh, my daughter got married. My, uh, I'm, a, I'm due to be a grandfather in a couple of weeks. So a lot has been going on. Um, we're, the house is up for sale. We're planning to move. A lot has been going on in my life. This generation moon uh, has just been... Ugh. I'm going to show you all of this in a moment. I think it was cemented with the first Starship launch. And I thought, yes, yes. Oh, let's get interested in this again. And then kaboom. <laughs> uh -uh. And then the Virgin Space launch and that didn't work out. And then the second Starship it was better, but it didn't work out. And I was like, oh. And then NASA are constantly saying, oh, well, let's put it off another few months. Let's put everything off. Yeah, let's delay, delay, delay. And then I thought, I really need to think about this, what it's all about. Do I, do I actually want to write children's books ever again? And this part of me is going, no, I don't ever want to write a book again. <laughs> and at the same time, it's saying, yeah, but you've got to make a video for Thursday and you've got to make another one for Tuesday. and You've got to plan things out for this channel. And you, uh, oh, basically, it's just too much going on. And I think that is, I have had too much going on in my life for quite some time, trying to do too much, running two channels, writing children's books, traveling around the country, caring for my mother, all sorts of stuff. It just, I think it just hit me. And there comes a point where you can't carry on. But if you do stop and start to reassess, then there does come a time when you come back again. And, and I think that has kind of happened. So I've done quite a lot of thinking about sunk cost fallacy and loss aversion and framing and all sorts of things. Um, sunk loss fallacy is I put 10 to 15 years of blood, sweat and tears into my two YouTube channels. And if I stop them, oh, yeah, but <laughs> I've, I've invested so much in them. that um, You know, I've got to keep going. I've got to keep going. I'm not thinking of the potential benefits of just stopping them or reassessing them. And in fact, the benefits of doing something different far outweigh the continuation of keep pouring energy into something which isn't really going anywhere. And then as Generation Moon, I have put a lot of effort and energy into this and I could say, well, I've done that. And, you know, what's the point of flogging a dead horse? But I think this is different. I, th I think I should at least go on to the next book. Um, and I think I should write the third one as well, even if I just give it away at the end and decide I don't want anything more to do it so, so that anybody who's bought the first two at least knows what happens. I have sunk time and energy and, and a bit of cash into this project and have had basically no return from it so far. But I think it's worth pursuing. And I, I thought a lot about family history, um, you know, with my mum dying. My paternal side, we're all geeks. And, and it's going back, it's just so interesting that, like my grandfather, he was a telegraphist in the post office. And he was a geek at the time. So he was very geeky and very into technology. My grandparents, I remember them when I was a child, they used to tap Morse code to each other at mealtimes. So while we were all chatting, they were having another conversation between them because my grandmother was also a telegraphist and they were, <laughs> that's how they met. My grandfather, he went into the Royal Signals, which was sort of military uh, signals and phones and things like that and, and had a, a career in, in telephones. Um, my father went into Royal Signals he was very geeky like that and like t loved technology. My brother went into the Royal Signals. He started up a telephone company himself. Uh, my sister's always been very geeky and loved, you know, computers and stuff. And, you know, I, I, I've been there from 1981 with my little, <laughs> funny little ZX81 computer, obsessed with computers and stuff and technology. And, and that's what this is about as well. And as a child, I was obsessed with Apollo. Again, I think very disappointed with NASA when it all kind of stopped. 
I sort of came away from it. So when Artemis started, you know, coming together, it, all the excitement started again. And the reality of living on the moon, going to Mars, it's, it's, it's a reality. Elon Musk has made it more of a reality. Bezos is making it more of a reality. And the Peregrine mission, that, mm, that didn't make it either, did it? And India crashed. All sorts of things have gone wrong. So Japan this week, they landed on the moon and it's not quite working. But it will. The technology gets better and better. It's going to happen. And I f feel now this is where I should put my energy and swing around, cut my losses with the drawing thing um, and just say that's not exactly over because I think the Draw Stuff Real Easy channel, I think I can continue, but with drawing tech stuff and drawing space stuff and niche it down, uh, as they say. The Shoe Rain Drawing Channel, it, it's a platform. It's a stable video platform, as they say <laughs> in the business, which I can use to show you and explain, you know, what's going on and to help market the books and make it a success. And I want you to help me make it a success. For some strange reason on Amazon.com, th this isn't for sale. You can get copies from second-hand dealers and they're not second-hand they're just going to get a new copy printed and send it to you so it's a little bit ridiculous so I've got to get some movement going on there if you have read this it would be fantastic if you went and put a five star thing on Amazon for me <laughs> that would really help get things moving it's getting things moving that's the thing so Generation Moon so there's the book is um oh. This is like a year ago. I don't know if there's a date on here anywhere somewhere when I started it. So this is about 18 months ago or something at least. And one of the first things I did was to come up with a... One of the first things I did was to come up with a, a mission badge. And I think actually that's what I need to do now is to get a new mission badge and stick it on my jacket. <laughs> because this is a new mission. The second book is a new mission. This was my first thought with the... For the mission badge and you see how I just went straight in with you know potential mission badge ideas and trying to think what the character looked like trying to work out what the character was characters were going to look like because there's a girl as well as a boy and a girl well, let's keep going let's keep going <laughs> I think this is where they first start to kind of appear and that's when I knew yeah this this is it this is Glenn this is Chen Shi who's known as CJ or Morning Star and um, so it's just lots of drawing, lots of planning, characters, stuff and things like that. I think I kind of got his character about here. Um, and you may remember I did this big picture of the, 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 the school that they go to, the space school. It's all planning and sketching and thinking. And these are some, some of the things that I did at the time. And uh, <laughs> this was... <laughs> This was my first badge. So I think that was probably the first one. It looks a bit rough, that one. So I had to get some different material and uh, it's all pr printed at home and ironed on. And I went and spent the evening embroidering all this stuff around the edge. Uh, and in the end, I got some nice ones made up. And this is, these are the things. And then there's the space agency. I made one of these and I embroidered around the blue as well. So there's Glenn and Chin Shin. CJ and there's a second book we move on to um, once one's finished um, oh yeah and I made I made a model <laughs> and I finally took it to a school um, just before Christmas which is my first school visit in a very long time I was really quite nervous and I had the whole school in there so they were from sort of five years old to 11 some were just really interested and at the end I said does anybody here think, you know, they might like to go in a rocket and go off to the moon? And yeah, there were. And there was one boy, the light that went on in his eyes was, it just took my breath away. This That kid wants to go to space. <laughs> so it's its a real thing, you know. I, and, you know, if I'm asked, would you do that? Would you climb in a rocket and go to the moon? I don't think I would, no. I think I'd find it claustrophobic, but I suppose if there was a big spaceship and it was a bit, you know, big thing like a starship, you know, that's a much more comfortable thing to be in. Starts making it more... Um, yeah, why not?
but, but I don't think I, I, I would somehow. I've had a very strange thing also in within a, this last year. In, about a year ago, I, the, there was this sort of thing going on with the planets. They were all lining up, and and I was looking at the moon every night, and and uh, and then that all went. And and I've been looking at the moon for the last year, thinking, what a cold, grey, miserable place. <laughs> I felt myself changing. Well, I felt myself coming back again. There's a TV programme we have here called Nature Watch. And in the winter, they have sort of four days where they go out looking at nature. And they took a shot of the moon, you know, a very close up shot. And I thought, wow, look, all those craters. And so I went outside with a pair of binoculars and took a little time looking at the moon going oh yeah no, that's yes yeah, quite pretty isn't it and it's the feeling coming back again so yeah um, this was my whole sort of launch strategy last year i think and other characters other characters and stuff and things this is working things out Start, starting to think what the the president of the usa might look like hmm nikki haley no maybe not <laughs> <laughs> I've forced myself to sit down and start writing it. Actually, I'm probably about halfway through the next um, book. And then anomalies started turning up. Oh, I need to think about this. And then, oh, I couldn't be bothered. The story in the first book follows a trajectory. And then in the second book, it splits. So you've actually got two stories going on. So I'm having to kind of time them against each other. i got to start thinking about you know the equipment they're using and how you might land on the moon and all sorts of various things like that but i'm finding that interesting again now <laughs> and these are some of the old this is some of the original artwork from the book so so that's where i'm at I made a video at christmas time what well, this is the new me um well it's not for the moment this is the new me i think perhaps this is the new me i think i i, I feel i'm kind of back again so I feel something has changed within me and my attitude to what this is all about now. I feel prepared to draw a line in the sand and say, that was the past. Now let's go forward into this. I've done that. <laughs> I know I've sunk a lot of cost into it, but never mind. Let's move on. That's, it's all good experience. And this is where I'm going to go. So I hope you'll stick with me on this channel and, you know, maybe I'll get a whole new audience. Who knows? Um, I'm not going to promise anything that I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that other than try and get the next book written. Because, as I say, it's like a line in the sand. I don't know quite what's going to come. I think as it goes on, I might be able to start planning a few things. But the main thing now is to write the next story. And really, how difficult can it be to write a kid's book? Thanks for watching. If you're still here, <laughs> I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.